everyone. I hope you're having an amazing day. Um, so today I'm going to start a new series that is the Salesforce Apex programming language for Salesforce admin. Uh, in 2021, I've decided to uh, train Salesforce admin and I've been getting a lot of requests to uh, talk about Salesforce Apex in detail. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So this course is for Salesforce admin. Uh, if you are a programmer, you might as well stay if you're interested. But if you have been working with Apex for, say, for over a year, then this course may not be uh, suitable for you because I'll be covering from very basics. So this course might seem a little bit dull for you if you are someone who's fairly confident with Apex side of things. But by all means, stay, stay tuned. And, you know, if you want it, you can listen to it, right? But if you are a Salesforce admin, right, then this is the course for you. And my main intention is to get you hooked up into Apex, right? Think about a scenario, right? You might be a Salesforce admin working for a big company or, or even if you're working stuff for yourself, right? And at times, you know, a company expects you to look at a code, right, written by developers and figure out what's going wrong in case of a bug or something, right? And if you have never programmed before, then it's an overwhelming experience for you, right? Think about it. I mean, programming is not an easy thing. People think it's a piece of a cake, but it is not. There are a lot of things behind it. But the good news is Apex is pretty straightforward. It's very easy to learn. So, right? So you don't have to worry much. You don't have to stress about it. It's not like other frameworks like .NET or Java where you have to remember, uh, you know, a huge amount of, you know, stuff the you know and because their library they have big libraries right there are a lot of stuffs going on in dotnet and but compared to uh, let's say uh, if you're someone who came from react js or angular js you'll find you know if you have worked uh, with html css then it's a great opportunity for you to learn uh server side of things as well uh, to learn how Salesforce does things behind the scene, right? Apex is a very powerful language, right? I'm going to talk about in a minute the, the capability which Apex offers to a developer and why it's very easy language to learn. And uh, if you are someone uh, who has seen Pascal or read Pascal in your uni days or, you know, whatever it is, you might find Apex a little bit similar because of case insensitivity, right? Apex is a case insensitive. Now you might wonder what the heck this guy talking about, right? Don't you worry, I'm gonna cover everything in detail, right? Okay, so now, since you're a Salesforce admin, I would expect you to know a little bit about Salesforce, right? I would expect you to know how to register for an org. I would expect you to know uh, what is an account. I would expect you to know how to create a custom object. I would expect you to know uh, how to trigger a flow, how to trigger a process builder. So I'm not going to cover that because I'm starting this course especially for Salesforce admin who has a knowledge of Salesforce. But if you are purely new to Salesforce, um, then I would highly encourage you to read a little bit about um, Salesforce before you come to this uh, Apex side of things because I might use terms like accounts, contacts, you know, uh, custom objects. You might wonder what the heck this guy talking about. So that I would expect you to have a little bit knowledge of Salesforce, at least how to create a contact, what is a contact, what is a lead, uh, uh, what is an opportunity, uh, a basic side of things you should be aware of because it's very important. The, the thing I wanted to mention is that you can never be a good Salesforce developer without knowing the admin side of things, right? Because the beauty of Salesforce is you don't have to write code uh, for every single thing, right? A lot of things you can do without writing code, right? That's enough said. Let's dive in. Okay, so you can use Visual Studio Code if you wanted to practice. That's fine, up to you. I have talked about how to configure uh, Salesforce with Visual uh, Studio Code. I will put the link in the description below for information if you are comfortable with Visual Studio Code. But let's assume you have never used any programming interface. So we're going to use the developer console, right? Pretty straightforward developer console. Uh, advantage of developer console is uh, you can use even a Chromebook to code, right? Look at that, right? You can use a Chromebook to code. How simple that could be, right? You don't have to uh, install any software. You can just, you know, log in 
to your you know Chromebook or you can you know use your laptop or your desktop you know it's pretty st straightforward okay right so now how to get into developer console okay that's pretty straightforward as you can see I've logged into my org there is a gear cog icon here okay and now I go to developer console here okay so if you're an admin and let's say you know you probably might know how to use the developer console but if you don't this is a way you, you can do get into developer console now developer console is pretty interesting you can do a lot of things here right so let's not worry about the code for now okay so when okay let me clear this as well um i will also talk about a little bit of Sokol. I mean, it's okay if you don't know how to write a SQL query. That's fine. Don't worry about it. I will talk in a little bit detail about SQL when we reach that stage. But today, that's not the day, right? So this is a fine-looking interface, right? You have file, right, where you can use new, right? And you can create an Apex class, Apex trigger, Visual Force page, Visual Force component, right? So don't worry about anything after apex trigger we're not going to talk anything about it right because this is not a visual force page or a lightning page uh, uh code sorry so we're going to talk about class we're going to talk about objects we're going to talk about object oriented concept right uh, it's very important for you to know right but today that's not the day today we're going to talk about a little bit nitty gritty part of apex syntax just to get you started right just to make you feel com uh comfortable with apex right i understand that you never programmed before that's fine so you're in the right place okay and you can see here query editor this is where you write your SQL query okay so we're not going to write here and we have a logs where you can see the logs right and this is the test where you run your test case now you wonder what this test case is about don't worry about it we'll talk about it later in detail right and we have checkpoints i'll explain to you what checkpoints are about when we get into detail and talk about view state we're going to talk about progress and problems right problems is pretty straightforward this is where you will see the problem in your code right okay now this is pretty straightforward okay now let's unfold the beast right what is apex right i mean you must be wondering this guy i've been talking about for the last 10 minutes apex apex but he didn't explain to us what is apex right okay Apex is an object-oriented programming language, right? It's designed by Salesforce, okay? Now, object-oriented programming language is different to functional language, okay? Now, I'm not gonna go into functional no, uh, language, so let's stick to object-oriented language. All the programming languages you might have heard in your life, right? Like C Sharp, Java, Python, right? Uh, uh, Ruby, um, C++, these are object-oriented program, right? Because they deal with objects, right? They deal with classes, right? They deal with the concept of objects, right? Everything is an object, right? Uh, it's about the stack and don't worry about it. I'm not gonna confuse you. Just hold on for a second, right? So it talks about object-oriented, right? Obje like, like I said, object-oriented, in terms of everything is represented in terms of an object okay so I'll explain to you in detail when we get into object-oriented side of things but just for now keep into consideration that it is an object-oriented programming language right it's not a dy dynamic language like um, uh, uh, like JavaScript okay now you might wonder what is a dynamic language right so in dynamic language right so you don't so when you write a piece of a code, right? So let's say I write a piece of a code and then you run it, uh, your compiler, right? Uh, the, the place, the IDE, integrated uh, environment, right? Where you write your code will not tell you upfront that, oh, there are pro these are the problems in code, right? You can only find out if there is an issue with your code when the code runs, right? code runs and you do some operation on an, an app. Let's say, let me give you a very simple example. You have a small web page, right? Your, your web page gets loaded, no problem. You have a, a few buttons on a, on a web page, let's say, to move back and forth, right? Let's say there is a fault in your back page code, right? Uh, the button where you want to move to another page or something, right? Just assume that. Uh, so if you're doing it in a JavaScript, when you run it and deploy it, it won't tell you there is a fault, right? uh 
Whereas Apex is different, right? When you run it, when you try to save it, when you try to run it, it will tell you, oopsie, there is a problem in your code. Perhaps mostly a syntax error, right? If there is a syntax error, JavaScript won't tell you straight away. Um, you know, or if you try to do something funny things, right? So I don't want it to confuse you. So just, I'll show you what I mean by that, right? Let me give a very simple example, okay? Um, don't get overwhelmed. I'm not gonna talk about much else about the classes. Let, let me, I have this one Apex class, right? This is an Apex code, right? And I will explain to you about Apex just for now. What I mean by, uh, you know, compile time or a run time, right? So let me say I adjust this, put something, okay? And try to save it, okay? You will see what happens, right? You see, it gave you an error here, right? You see this red dot here? It says unexpected token, right? So it will do a compile time checking, right? When you save the code, it actually compiles in the behind the scene and tells you, oh, look, there is something wrong here, right? So that's why Apex is powerful. You can figure out an error straight away when you try to save it because it won't let you save. If there are if there are issues in your code, right? Okay, that's one of the things. And you might know what is a multi-tenant, right? Because Salesforce is a multi-tenant, right? Where the resources are shared. So so Apex is pretty different to your .NET or Java, right? Because it runs on the cloud, right? It's not that you have a separate IDE. You know, you can do uh, you can do offline using Visual Studio Code, but it's a little bit different to your uh, your Java or C sharp uh, things, right? Um, so it's get compiled in the cloud and, and the code gets saved in the cloud. That's how it happens, right? So it's not like that you have the ownership of the code, you can take your code. You can by all means, you can take your code and save somewhere else. But in Salesforce, it stores the cloud, uh, sorry, it's, it saves the code in the cloud so that it can run in the cloud. Okay, now, why do you have to learn Apex, right? You might be thinking, oh, I heard someone when talking about the Lightning component and Visual Force page. Why do you have to learn Apex, right? Why can't I learn Lightning? That's a good question. Now, there are two things which you have to, there's a server-side programming and there's a client-side programming, right? Um, so if anything to do with your friend and, right, the look and feel, right? You can see that, you know, look and feel in the sense, um, this one. This is your friend end, right? Front-end code, that's where the lightning comes into the picture, right? Lightning code, right? Your JavaScript code comes in the picture. But anything to do with your backend, right? Where the server calls needs to be called, that's where Apex runs in the picture, right? For instance, you wanted to schedule a, if you're an admin, right? You know how to schedule a job, right? If you wanted to do schedule a job using your Apex, right? Using a code, then you use Apex. You wanted to pull some information let's say from a third party API, you use Apex there, right? Let's say you wanted to push information to another API, you use Apex there, see? In API integration, Apex is highly used. Um, your batch processing APIs is highly used, right? Okay, let's dive in now to look at some code, okay? So we close this boy here because we're not interested in this. Now, where do you practice it, right? To see, pretty straightforward. Okay, so go to edit, uh, sorry, go to debug and open execute anonymous window. This is where you're gonna write Apex code to practice it, okay? All right, now, in, we have few things. In, in a programming language, right? Programming language, it's like, a, it's like a normal language you speak, right? It could be English or French, it could be Hebrew, uh, could be uh, Sanskrit or could be, you know, any language, right, you speak. It's something similar, right? So programming language is the language you, you use to speak to your computer, right? That's all it is, right? So computer has to understand what you're trying to say. You can't say, hey, mate, how are you doing? It, Apex, so what the heck? What are you trying to say? Are you trying to send a string? Now you wonder what is a string, okay? So that's where the data types comes in the picture, right? So you might have heard about date, right? Everyone looks at, you know, everyone knows how to look at uh, how to uh, calculate the time, right? If someone asks you, oh, mate, can you tell me what's the time now? You can pretty, pretty much tell someone, right, what's the time. 
So that's where the date, uh, date and time data type comes in picture, right? So data types are very important, right? That's where the thing which you deal with when you do uh, work with Apex, right? The first is the string. The string is, you know, the way you declare uh, the string is like, you know, text, right? Hey, how are you doing? You know, any kind of error message that goes into string. Any kind of information you want to display that goes into string, right? Cool. And now we have a boolean boolean is like yes and yes and no true or false right so uh so we have boolean right that's true and false like it's like um if right uh say um if x equal to 10 right in, in simple terms and where the value of x is not 10 right let's say value of x is 5 and you're comparing if is the value of x equal to 10? So the answer will be no, right? That's where the Boolean logic comes in the picture, right? And then we have currency, uh, sorry, decimal, right? Right, this is where you talk about the, uh, uh, you know, the decimal places, right? And then you have double, right? And then we have integer, right? So if you wanted to have uh, integer, right? Everyone knows what integer is, right? If you're studying mathematics, you know what integer is, right? And then we have list. Uh, it's a collection. Now, you might wonder what the heck is collection, right? We'll worry about that later, okay? And um, we have maps. Now, yeah, maps, right? So we'll talk about maps later. And we have set, right? So this is a, also a collection, right? And then we have something called s object right which is a another data type okay so for now we worry about these you know few data types and so we need to declare a variable right now you might wonder what is a variable variable is where you store the value right for your operation inside the code okay so now there are two kinds of variable one is a local variable right and where the scope is limited to a function now, you might wonder what is a function. I'll explain it in a later minute, right? So, in a code, right, let's say I wanted to um, calculate um, to, uh, I wanted to add two numbers, right? Okay, so it's pretty straight to do it, straightforward to do it, right? So, we need to declare two variables, right? Uh, one, let's say A, and other say B, right? And A will hold, let's say, whatever value, B will hold whatever value and C will hold the sum of A and B, right? It's pretty straightforward, okay? So so now, what do you think the data type should be? You can't use string, right? String is only for text, right? You can do alphanumeric, but you can't do addition or subtraction using a string, right? Um, so integer, because if you're not expecting a decimal, right? If you're saying, I want to add only, uh, you know, non-decimal numbers, like one, two, three, then you shouldn't be worrying about doubles, right? Then you should be only worrying about uh, integer, right? So what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do integer a, okay? And you can say integer. Okay, now let me run this first, okay? Okay, so no error. The way to find out there's a no error, see, as you can see that, when I did execute right, it gave an error, okay? Now I'll define integer C, okay? Now I can put A plus B, right? So obviously it will work, but will it give any result? There is no result because you are trying to, that means there is no value to it, okay? So now if I put, Let's say I put A equals to 1, okay? Now B equals to 1, right? Okay, and now I'm going to say... So, now, if I run this, okay, it will work, okay? No problem, because there is no error, because obviously it will give the value of C will be 2. Now, how to test it, right? 
what's the value of the C? How to see in a debug console? There is a code here, right? Uh, Salesforce gives you a very simple way. So you can do system.debug, okay? Just put C. It will flush out the information on the debug screen, okay? Just a second, I'll show you, okay? So when you do execute, it will generate a log file for you because there's an open log text. Sorry, checkbox, right? And go back here, okay? So you can see this. And we can say debug only. You can see two, right? Because one plus one, two, right? Now, this is not really fun, right? I mean, you you can you can do something like this, right? Now, let's say this is integer, okay? Now, these are in general, uh, if you, uh, so we have something called local variable and global variable that will become clear when we talk about classes and functions, right? So you can write a simple function here. Function is like, uh, now if if I wanted to um, say use, the p use this piece of a code, right? The only way I can do is that I have to copy paste it again and again elsewhere, right? Which is not really good. In programming, remember one thing, copy paste, duplication of a code is, is a horrible practice. It's the worst practice, right? Uh, so you should not doing, it. I've seen many codes which, you know, makes me wonder, what the heck that guy was thinking, right? I was, it's just rubbish, I would say, right? So you often, it's good to uh, put that in the form of a function, but I'll explain to you later what function means. Uh, where If you wanted to reuse your code again and again and again, right? Keeping the logic same, then it's good to put in the function, right? Right, okay. Now, this is about the integer. Now you have, if you wanted to say, I wanted to have a decimal, right? I wanted to add, Say so if I wanted to, I'll show you the difference here, 1.2, okay, 1.2. Now see the difference, okay? So you can't assign from decimal to integer, right? So you'll get an error, okay? Now if you wanted to keep this here, okay? And now you can do double A, okay? And integer, so A1. You can you always remember to give a meaningful name. So you can put first value, okay? And you can put second value, all right? And so double, right? You can put double or double this way. It doesn't matter because it is a case insensitive language. You remember I talked about case insensitive, right? Uh, cases don't matter like C sharp. If you put the double and this double, both means different things, right? Or if you put this, uh, say, uh, for instance, you have first value, right? Now, if I put this one, right, in, in C sharp, these first, this first value and this first value means two entirely different variables, right? Because they are case sensitive language, but whereas Apex, they're both the same, right? So it means the same. So if I put F1 equals to, say, because if you are someone who, you know, fiddles with the case and, you know, accidentally you say, oh, okay, you type F in this case, the lower case, and then you say, okay, let me do the second value um, equals to, right? And then you say double third value equals to, um, okay, um, one right um, and you as usual the debug right so we're gonna do the third value okay and so in C sharp or other language which is case sensitive this will not work because first of all this variable does not exist right because you haven't defined it this is what call you define a variable with the data type right this is the data type and this is a name of the variable, right? In simple term, a data type, name of the variable, right? So in this case, since it's case insensitive, it doesn't matter. So it should work, okay? Now if you go here and back, it takes some time to load, right? You see that it has a big 4.333, right? So now, Let me show you another thing, right? If you do decimal, say, okay, now, if I don't want to use this code, you can comment this code out, right? Means it will not work, okay? 
So let's say there are two ways to comment. If you want to do individual line of comment, so you can do this. So that means this code does not exist on this context. So now when you try to run it, it will give an error. Variable does not exist because you commented out the code, right? Or if you want to comment out the entire block, you can do this, right? You close this one. Simple, okay? Now, let me show you how to do with the decimal. There's a... Let's see what happens if you do decimal, right? If there is something called decimal in the first place, right? Let's figure out. Let's run it. Okay. Let's do decimal second value. Okay. And let's say uh, I'm going to put okay, 2.4. As I said, it's case insensitive, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, What? Third value. Programming is fun, right? If you enjoy programming, then it's great. Okay, so see, something doesn't exist. So that's a typo, sorry. Uh, Apex one fix your typo, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, third value doesn't exist because I didn't put this one. Okay, you have to always define a variable with the data type, otherwise you'll get a message it does not exist okay so yeah, um and so yeah so it's got 5.1 right now you might wonder hmm, what's going on okay let's have a look and that's the right calculation because it's it's actually uh precise the decimal places right so if you can do uh 5.2 two so usually it's 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 very good if you are dealing with currency right money amount so that's where decimal is very handy Okay, and so, right, so this is pretty good, okay. Now, let's talk about um, um, uh, Booleans, right? So, I'm going to delete this one, okay? Uh, so, we're going to say Boolean uh, demo, okay? Okay, so you can say demo equals to true, okay? Now, system.debug demo. Right. So you can only assign true or false value to it, right? If it's a true or it's it's used for, uh, you know, conditional testing, right? If this happened, then do this. If else, do this, right? So we're going to talk about if else as well, which programming language if else plays a very important role. Now, you can't assign anything else to this. So if you try to do that, you can assign false as well. Okay, so false will work. That's fine. Now, if you if you assign falses, say for instance, right, it will give an error because there's no such thing called falses because the data type only understand true or false because that's the boolean data type, right? And then you have date. Then you have you know you have date, right? Then you have date time. Okay. So these are another thing which you can talk about. I'm I'm not going to talk about that today. Uh, so just not to complete confuse you guys. There's one last thing I want to talk about today that's string which is very important string like uh, Demo this is like if you wanted to uh, display a message or a text, right? So you're gonna do demo equals to um, Hello world um, Let's see I oh, Sorry, that's the, this is a, okay. Hello world. So this is how this, uh, because if you if you work with a different programming language, sometimes you get confused, right? Because in uh, uh, in Apex, right? This is how you declare it, a string. In C sharp, you put double quotes there, right? So, um, so this is how you de declare a string. And like I said, if you wanted to. Uh, display an error message or wanted to display a text, then you should use the string, right? String is not used for any arithmetic calculation. If you wanted to do mathematical calculation, then string is not the data type. You need to use uh, integer, doubles, decimals, right? Uh, if you wanted to do a logical check, right? If and else, then Boolean variable, right? If you wanted to work with dates, then only should use dates, right? If you wanted to display today date, 
and store it in a variable, then you should use um, today, then use the date or date time, right? Date time will display date and time, right? Okay, so let's see what happens. And, um, right, okay. Right, so it's pretty straightforward, right? Now, I hope you guys are feeling pretty much confident, right? This is one step, right? I'm sorry I, I took long to explain, but I just wanted to make sure you understand it. Because when I first learned programming many years ago, right, my, my professor told me, right, if you don't understand the fundamentals, there's no point in learning fancy frameworks, right? There are 50 frameworks out there, you know, there are a lot of, uh, you know, libraries out there. But if you don't understand the fundamentals, there's no point, right, because you will struggle. Right, because it's easy to transition from one language to another language if you understand the programming concept. Uh, object-oriented programming concept is same. Inheritance, that's one part of object-oriented. We're gonna talk about it when we deal with classes and interfaces, right? Uh, this is gonna be a long course because I'll try to make it every day because programming is one of my favorite part of Salesforce, in Salesforce, right? Apex, I love Apex. Um, it's, 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 it's a great uh, language, right? and a lot of complex stuff you can do. So I hope you're excited as I am. And my main aim, once you finish this Apex course of mine, I'm, I can assure you that you can go and start fiddling with the Apex code and you will even feel very confident when you look at someone else's code, right? That's my main intention to get you trained in Apex, right? Uh, this is very different to Lightning. So we're gonna talk about Lightning later part of the year, okay? All right, that being said, uh, greetings and adios from New Zealand. Take care.